asking, refer a patient for a scan or get the scan in your office. Not enough, but you need to understand how to read a scan. Now, I can tell you, simulate the implant position, but if you don't know where those implants have to be placed, then you're still not delivering a high value treatment, high quality treatment. So I'm going to give you the second crash course in implant placement that'll take just five minutes, just so we're all on the same page in terms of implant positioning. Okay, now divide it into molars and incisors. Just to give you some general guidelines that are just a culmination of all the knowledge that we acquired in the past 30, 40 years in regards to implants, and some things that you can go by, because don't forget, the software is dumb. Computers are dumb. The, the, the smart entity is you. You're the one with an actual brain, and you can just make decision. But So every software can be programmed to place implants in the wrong position, into nerves, into teeth, into other implants. So it's your job to know where to place it. And I'm going to give you just the uh, quick summary of how to plan implants. So when you plan a molar or any tooth, you'd like to be at least 1.5 millimeters from the adjacent teeth. Okay, that's one rule. So for a molar that is 12 millimeters in a mesodistal dimension, if you take the space between the implant and the adjacent teeth is at least 1.5, you have a lot of leeway for obvious reasons. And it gets more narrower as we get to other sites in the mouth. From a buccal-lingual direction, you'd like to have at least two millimeters to the buccal plate. Now, does it always happen? We don't always have the luxury. So sometimes we need to uh, adjust the implant position. Sometimes we need to plan on preventative grafting. So, you know, you have a lot of leeway in the virtual world. I just wanted to give you the guidelines, okay? I set up every software to warn me when I'm getting closer than two millimeters to the to the alveolar, alveolar nerve. So it'll give me a warning signal. So two millimeters uh, doesn't sound like a lot, but it's actually uh, quite a bit of leeway. I want you to remember that when you prepare an osteotomy, the length of your drills is very often longer than the implant. So you're drilling a little bit longer, depending on the implant configuration and the design and how the system works, but generally speaking, the drills are longer to accommodate an implant that is slightly shorter than the longest drill. So sometimes up to 1.1 millimeters, which is quite a big. So if you're planning a, a leeway to the nerve that is one millimeter, you may be into the nerve in terms of the osteotomy. So be careful. So adhere to the two millimeter rule. And I like to plan implants, as, as you can probably imagine, as probably you prefer as well, in a screw axis trajectory. So you have the option to make it retrievable, all the advantages of a screw axis implant restoration, but also have the option. And when it comes to the uh, multiple implants, I would program the software to, to warn me if I'm getting closer than three millimeters, okay? So 1.5 to an adjacent tooth and three millimeters between implants. Now these measurements can be so accurate in the system. It's, it's just humanly not possible to do. You can also have all these implants completely parallel in a three dimension, if that's important to you, in a way that you will never be able to align with the human hand. Now, when it comes to the aesthetic zone, it's even more critical. So the 1.5 millimeter rule is still the same. And you don't have as much leeway compared to a molar. Let's say you're replacing a lateral incisor that has six millimeters of bone. You immediately run out of space and you have room for three millimeters. So many times I find that in for lateral incisors, we actually have to go closer than 1.5 millimeters. Just we don't, we don't have the room unless we use a three millimeter Im diameter implant. So it's, it becomes kind of tricky. The same rule, the buccal bone has to be at least two millimeters for stability. And what's even more critical or the most critical is the apical coronal direction or position. You need to be about three millimeters apical to the ideal gingival margin to allow you for proper emergence profile. 
Okay, so a lot is a stake. A lot is up to you in ideally a screw access position. Now, this factor is now much better because some implant systems have a way to use a tilted screw technology. So you can have an implant that is maybe positioned a little bit to the buckle, going through the incisor ledge or through the buckle, but actually you can use a tilted screw and it can, be, can still be with a screw axis position. Okay, so here's the summary. You may want to take a snapshot with your camera. We need to be uh, about, and I'm happy to email everybody the slide or any slide you'd like. We have to be about two millimeters to the buckle plate, three millimeters apical to the gingival margin, 1.5 to the adjacent teeth, and you have the leeway to the nerve, which is about two millimeters. I hope this is all clear.